and, and you're missing the point of what they are, what are they proposing as bodies, as people, as performers, like what is the interesting part of who they are, you know? And sometimes, they, I think this is the most difficult thing for an artist to decide when you have to say, okay, let's forget about this and let's focus on, on something else. Um, yeah, that's really interesting though, because I was thinking about how um, you're credited as writer and director. And so I was thinking about your rehearsal process um, as a form of collecting particular stories. What are some of the strategies you use in the rehearsal room to help people develop and speak to their own stories? And then how secondarily does your role as the writer to take these and write them in a script form come out of that process? Yeah, I think it's um, somehow, I think sometimes people, especially not in Melancholia Demonstration because it was clear that it was a text that I wrote and it, because it was my story, but I think in most of the other documentary projects people have, like there is this effect of authenticity or effect of reality that make people think, oh, they just you know, they just came the first day and said their stories right. like this. <laughs> and what she did was like just to put two people together. <laughs> and that's it. Mm. Uh, so there is this kind of, you know, like you have the feeling because the people seem to talk so naturally and that it seems that there is not a written text mm. um, that took a long time to, to do. Um, and in fact, it is a very long process because it starts with interviews with each performer. There are very long interviews where I'm like writing and tra making transcriptions about everything they say. And then we are working on scenes, we decide which is the story we're going to reconstruct. And then we work on this story. And sometimes the first time they told the story that is going to be at the end in one scene. For example, Carla telling all the ways uh, his father's story was told to her, like, this scene would last one hour and a half, just this scene, because she would be telling everything. Uh, and to get from this one hour and a half to this three minutes scene, you know, you have to, <laughs> you know, get to really, like, the central points of the story and to find, like, the... And I, I feel, I am so, I mean, I am, I, I, I was like, um, I'm a writer before everything else, so sometimes it's, it's difficult for people to see that this is very written, very written, you know, like everything they say is very written. It doesn't matter that it comes from a, a real person. Uh, it's not that it's less written because it's coming from, you know, from a real story. It's written in every every word is chose, you know, every expression, uh, the tone, like the, the the rhythm of it. And of course you have to, but and it's even more difficult because you have to write uh, the images and the and to condense the story in a in a very short scene. But also you have to write in a way that when this person say this text, it sounds very like you know belonging to this person so it has to adapt to the way this person speaks to me. so um, sometimes this is also um, you know strange because people wouldn't recognize you as a writer and I think there is a lot of you know work on every text of these projects really a lot and it's also a I mean, it's also that the process of writing the text is a whole process of also people going back and going back again to the same story and thinking it further. Because after this one hour and a half first tryout, then you write the text and then it's like a half an hour thing. And then it goes shorter and shorter. And then it starts this negotiation between you and the performer about how to tell the story. Because it's not only that you as a writer, you write it and then you give it to an actor who just repeat. 
is his story or her story, so they have their own opinions about what should be told mm -hmm. and how and what images and what words. So then you're negotiating with the person like, no, but I think this expression is better. No, why? But why? And uh, but I feel I don't feel good saying this. Can I change this word? Yeah, okay, you can change this word, but you can add this other word here. And you're like all the time, you know, like in this collaboration, trying to create something that feels that they feel represented uh, by, you know, that they feel represented by this text. But you also, as an author, you feel that the text is good. So this is a very complicated um, thing. Um, and is that interviewing process usually between you and that specific person, or is it often within full ensemble or full company? It goes, I mean, in the beginning it's only me and the person mm -hmm. alone, and then we do exercises together, so they would, okay, I bring this photo, okay. So now the exercise is one of you will tell the story of a photograph. You will choose a photograph of your family album, and you will speak 10 minutes about this. So it's in interaction with the other. And now you two together will tell parallelly the story. I and mean, you will work with her in reconstructing the story of your father, and he will be your father, and you will be, you know what I mean? Like. So there are many different exercises um, that we do together and I think the group helps a lot because in these kind of groups where there is a shared uh, experience, slowly you're building up something that is like, okay, okay, I will tell this because I heard what she, tell, what she told and now I feel more, you know, I feel encouraged to tell something more that I couldn't say before because she said that. She shared that and now I will share this. It, it works also almost like a therapy group in a way, you know what I mean? Like a group therapy where you're like people are telling, in a way, but on the other hand, it's not about, it's really about constructing something artistic. So it's not about like, okay, we will understand each other, it's more about we share these experiences, but we have to transform them into a text, into an artistic thing. Um, so even if we can give support, uh, the, the main objective, I mean the main purpose of this thing um, is not only to give support, but to create something out of it. And I think the distance of arts, or of art also allowed the people to to create this distance with their own lives, that they see it like as someone else's life at some point.